My husband, who had been working overseas, was coming back to US for a visit, and we decided to have a dinner party at home with our son and his wife. Although we were enjoying a pleasant conversation, the mood quickly turned sour when our grandson, Danny, made an unexpected remark. So today isn't grandma's punishment day, huh? It means we can eat together. Despite our best efforts to keep things under wraps, Danny's comment blew our cover. I didn't know how to react, finding myself speechless and looking down in silence. My son and his wife scrambled to cover up, but the more they talked, the more Danny spilled the beans. In a panic, Julia, my daughter-in-law, finally snapped. Danny, just be quiet for a bit. She yelled, causing Danny to cry. That's when my husband, Nick, raised his voice in disapproval. Don't just yell at the child like that. What was a peaceful dinner turned tense in an instant, leaving only Danny's crying to fill the now silent living room. Nick asked our son, Keith, to explain the situation. Meanwhile, I was comforting Danny, holding him in my arms. I'm sorry, Grandma. It's my fault. Will you get scolded again? Wondering what to do next, I could only hold Danny and stay quiet. My name is Catherine, a housewife in my 60s. Nick and I had an office romance, which was tough to keep secret until I left my job upon getting married. In an era without smartphones, exchanging contact information wasn't easy, and office romances were supposed to be kept secret. Even after getting engaged, we worried about being discovered by our boss and stressed over wedding details, feeling like we were planning someone else's ceremony. Any mistake could have led to Nick facing sarcasm at work, so we lived every day on edge. However, all those hardships strengthened our bond, a fact we were reminded of when Nick was assigned overseas, leading to our separation. I think I can return within three years. But I'm worried. Won't you come with me? I appreciate the thought, but going abroad at my age is challenging. Unlike you, I only speak English. Nick has always been worried about leaving me alone in US while he goes abroad. Besides, if anything happens, Keith and his family are here. We can always call, so there's no need to worry too much. Yeah, you're right. Our son Keith moved out 14 years ago to live on his own when he started college. After graduating, he met his future wife, Julia, in the cafeteria of the company where he got a job, and they married seven years ago. Two years after their marriage, our grandson, Danny, was born. Although Keith hardly ever came home when he was single, the birth of Danny changed that, and he began visiting home regularly. Both Nick and I have always looked forward to these visits from Keith's family. However, we also enjoyed the peaceful and fun days we spent together as a couple. What made me especially happy was that Nick would plan trips for us to take together during long weekends. I've been so busy with work all this time, leaving everything at home up to you, Catherine. Let's make more time for us as a couple from now on. Saying so, he would take me to places I wanted to go. This was our first time facing a long-distance assignment, and it was overseas at that. It's not easy to just come back home. It's understandable that Nick was worried. However, should anything happen, we could rely on our son and his wife, who live just 15 minutes away from the nearest bus stop. So, I reassured Nick that there was no need to worry. About a month and a half before departure, I hurt my back and had to go to the hospital. It was what you'd call a slipped disc. Fortunately, the symptoms were mild, and I could go to the hospital by myself and maintain a minimum level of daily life. However, this seemed to be a major issue for Nick before his departure, and he started saying he would delay his departure until my back was better. I'm happy you feel that way, but it's not necessary to delay your work for this. But I'm worried about you living alone. What if something happens? 
The discussion between me, trying to reassure him that there's no need to worry, and Nick, insistent on his concern if anything were to happen, was at a stalemate for several days. We're both adults here, so let's not worry about such things. If anything happens, we can ask Keith and his family for help. It'll be fine. Yet, Nick continued to worry. I kept trying to persuade him throughout the day. Then, as if struck by a sudden idea, Nick mused aloud. Keith. Ah, that's it. Why don't we live with Keith? Let's ask him. What? Nick immediately called Keith to talk about my back situation and his upcoming business trip abroad. Hearing the situation, Keith said, I understand the circumstances, I'll talk it over with Julia and get back to you, okay? And then he hung up. Inside, I doubted such a hasty plan for cohabitation would ever be agreed to. However, Keith's response was completely unexpected. Julia's okay, with it it's just for up to three years, right? That's totally fine by us. Really? That's a relief. Keith, I'm counting on you to look after your mom. And so, we were set to live with Keith's family, pushed through by my husband. Julia, Keith's wife, was working as a cook in the same company cafeteria as Keith. A year ago, she had successfully opened her dream European-style restaurant and left the company. Both Keith and Julia were working hard together. I'm sorry for imposing on you when you've just started your business and are so busy. A few days after deciding to live together, we had a dinner meeting with Keith's family. While Nick and Keith were talking over drinks, I took the opportunity to quietly express my apologies to Julia. I thought accepting an injured mother-in-law for three years during a crucial time for her restaurant would be nothing but trouble for Julia. However, Julia said, Please don't worry about it. We help each other out in times of need. Also, when you're feeling better, could you sometimes spend time with Danny? And she made a request. We do send him to daycare, but he's always alone from the evening until night. Watching Julia speak apologetically, I realized why she had agreed to us living together. She probably wanted me to spend time with my grandson. Of course. If there's anything else I can do, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm here to help with whatever you need. As I said this with a smile, Julia also smiled back, relieved. At that moment, I was truly relieved to know I wouldn't just be a burden. Living with Keith's family turned out to be more peaceful and comfortable than I had imagined. Not only were they gracious enough to accept us living together, but they also prepared a room just for me, saying there was a spare one available. Wanting to be of help, I took the initiative in doing the laundry, washing dishes, and picking up Danny from daycare. Eventually, I even started preparing dinner in place of Julia when she came home late due to preparing for the next day's work at her restaurant. Being able to spend so much time with my adorable grandson was a blessing. Though the cohabitation started on a whim of Nick's, at that time, I was genuinely happy and grateful every day to Nick and to my son and his wife. However, this happy time did not last forever. It all started with an offhand comment Danny made during dinner. I like auntie's food better than mom's. Oh my, thank you. Home cooking couldn't possibly beat that of a professional chef. But for Danny, who has parents that run a European-style restaurant, my American cuisine must have felt fresh and delicious. Danny even proudly mentioned that he could eat vegetables he didn't like when it was my cooking. I told him he was doing great and praised him a lot. Actually, Danny's pickiness was just like Keith's when he was a child. So, when I made the same dishes Keith liked, Danny ended up eating them too, by coincidence. But this incident unintentionally stepped on a landmine for Julia. If you like grandma's cooking so much, why don't you have grandma cook for you every day from tomorrow? 
Julia's expression was calm, but her tone was clearly angry. Keith and I felt it was better not to say anything unnecessary and continued eating in silence. However, five-year-old Danny, oblivious to the situation, was thrilled. Really? Yay! I can eat grandma's cooking every day. Seeing Danny's reaction only made Julia even more upset. And since then, I became responsible for preparing the family's meals. As a former housewife, cooking was not a burden for me at all. The problem was seeing Julia's gaze turn more and more glaring as Danny and Keith praised the meals. Moreover, Danny would always choose me for everything. Bath time, reading storybooks, changing clothes, drawing, putting him to bed. He said he wanted grandma for it all. I was happy to oblige my adorable grandson's requests. But perhaps for Julia, it felt as though her child was being taken away from her. Please don't spoil Danny so much. Really? This is why I can't stand the elderly. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. Before I knew it, Julia's attitude towards me became cold and filled with disgust. Four months after my husband went abroad, Julia made a suggestion. From today, instead of paying rent, you'll take over all the housework. When I asked her why the sudden change, she explained it was difficult to provide for an additional adult's food and utility costs for three years for free. She wanted these expenses to be compensated for through labor. Your back pain is better now, right? Then, I expect you to work hard from now on. Faced with Julia's cold demeanor and matter-of-fact speech, I was at a loss for words. Was this really the same Julia? I felt fear towards the completely changed person she had become since we started living together, so I silently complied. Practically speaking, the cost of living had indeed increased by one adult's share. So, I understood Julia's point of wanting me to cover that by doing housework. I decided to make more effort to alleviate Julia's burden, hoping it would calm her down and we could return to how things were before. At that time, I thought making an effort could restore our good relationship. The only solace was that Danny and Keith enjoyed and finished their meals without leaving any behind. However, this hope was soon to be shattered. If I folded laundry, I was scolded for doing it wrong. If I washed dishes, I was criticized for being sloppy. And when Danny showed affection towards me, Julia accused me of bribing him with food to win him over. No matter how hard I tried, everything seemed to irritate Julia. Yet, I continued to do my best for the family's sake, tirelessly handling household chores. The only thing that had been a joy, the meals, had now become a minefield with Julia. What's so good about such outdated home cooking? It's not delicious, and it looks so plain that I can't eat it. After saying this, Julia went to the kitchen, made a meal for herself, and ate alone. The atmosphere at the dinner table was as cold as if seeing a ghost. Fearing what harsh words might come next, I couldn't continue eating and my chopsticks froze midair. Danny couldn't bear the tension either and left his meal unfinished that day. Dinner ended in silence from everyone, and as I was about to clear the dishes. Mother-in-law, please sit down for a moment. With a cold and low voice, Julia stopped me in my tracks. Bracing myself for a scolding, I sat down disheartened. And when I cautiously looked at Julia's face, she was glaring at me with an even more hostile expression than usual. I'm a professional, you know. When I cook, it means money is involved. Understand? Yes. I understand. I managed to squeeze out a response somehow. For making me cook outside of work, you need to be punished, mother-in-law. The word punished sent a chill down my spine. Having already felt nearly broken, I wondered what more could be done to me. 
My fingertips were cold, yet I could feel sweat on my palms. I waited for Julia's next words with bated breath. Julia smirked and then said, From tomorrow, you're going without meals. And left the living room after dropping that bombshell. The absence of insults or verbal abuse momentarily left me feeling bewildered. Is it over? This was the first time something ended so lightly, which made it all the more frightening. The next day, I truly experienced what it was like not to be allowed a single meal, and I quickly understood the terror of this punishment. No matter how hungry I was, I wasn't allowed to take a break from housework. On top of that, I had to prepare meals for everyone else but myself. Because of this, my stomach was constantly growling. On shopping days, I felt like I would collapse from hunger. If being verbally abused within the house was far better than this hardship. Going without meals as a punishment happened up to three times a week. Keith, who I had hoped would be my support, was too busy reading Julia's moods to be of any help. Instead, Keith recently started to join Julia in berating me and became harsher towards me. If Julia caught Danny being kind to me, it would result in him getting scolded. This made me minimize my interactions with Danny to the bare minimum. The room prepared specially for me became no better than a storeroom and now I can't even stretch out my legs to sleep. Somehow, I had become less than luggage. If I were to endure such terrible treatment, I might as well go back to my own home. That thought crossed my mind, but considering Nick working overseas, I couldn't bring myself to act on it. It would be a maximum of three years until he returns. I told myself that enduring this period was all that was needed. So, I lived each day like a shell, paying the utmost care not to provoke Julia or step on any landmines. This was a certain day, a little over a year after Nick had gone abroad. Hey, is this Keith? It's sudden, but I'm coming back to the country next week. How about we all go out to eat? Next week? That's really sudden. Why don't we have dinner at home instead? Ah, uh. that sounds good. By the way, how's mom? Every time I call, I'm told she's busy playing with Danny and the call gets cut off. So, I hardly get to speak to her. Ah, uh, yeah. She's fine. We'll be waiting for you next week then. Keith said this and abruptly ended the call. At dinner time, Julia relayed the news to me. Although Julia's face clearly showed she was bothered, I was very happy. The calls from Nick had stopped after the first few months. I assumed his job must be keeping him too busy to call. Though I thought so, deep down, I felt very lonely. Moreover, I was forbidden by Julia from calling Nick, so all I could do was wait for him to contact me. Whether he had gotten injured, fallen ill, or become too worn out from overworking. All the worries I had for Nick piled up, and finally, I could resolve them next week. I felt revitalized, as if coming back to life after a long time. However, seeing my reaction, Julia seemed to get very upset for some reason. What's with that happy face? It's as if I'm doing something wrong. Eh? What happened all of a sudden? Nobody is saying that. Shut up. Don't talk back to me. You're getting punished today too. Even being suddenly told so, I was confused. That day, I was not allowed to have a meal again. Furthermore, for the week until my husband's temporary return, I was forced to help with the restaurant preparations and handed heavy flyers. Don't come back home until you've handed out all of these. And I was driven out of the house. The treatment I received became even harsher than before. Every day, I was on the verge of collapsing. What could have displeased her this time? I tried to figure out the cause of Julia's new landmine, but due to exhaustion and hunger, I couldn't think of anything. 
So, I spent my days being more cautious of Julia's moods than ever. Finally, the day came when Nick returned and we were to have a meal together. Excited to see him after such a long time, I cooked all of Nick's favorite dishes in abundance and waited for him at the entrance. Catherine, I've missed you. Have you lost weight? And your complexion seems off too. No, that's not the case. Are you sure you're not the one who's worn out from work? Nick's sharp observation momentarily unsettled me. The week leading up to his return had been especially exhausting due to punishments, household chores, and helping out at the store. I was indeed on the verge of collapsing. However, I didn't want to worry Nick, so I tried my best to hide my poor health. Still, Nick seemed not to be convinced and continued to press with more questions. I've been calling all the time, but you never seem to answer. Did something happen over here? Eh? All the time? Since when? Since I went abroad, I've been calling twice a month. But every time, I was told you were too busy to talk. Hearing that Nick had been calling so frequently was news to me, I had no idea. As I stood there, stunned, Keith and Julia appeared from the back. They greeted Nick with smiles and led him into the living room. Danny, waiting in the living room, joyously jumped into Nick's arms. Nick, having not seen his grandson for over a year, was delighted by the reunion. Watching this heartwarming scene, I had almost forgotten about the conversation at the entrance. And then, at Julia's cue, dinner started. While everyone else sat around the table enjoying themselves, I found myself standing a bit away from the table, as if out of habit. Mother-in-law, what are you doing over there? Please come sit down. Surprised by her call, I quickly took my seat. Inside, I was thinking how scary habits can be, while Nick watched me suspiciously. If I make any more mistakes, I can't imagine what kind of harsh treatment I'll receive later. Thinking this, I decided to stick close to Nick ensuring the serving and drinks were meticulously handled. Thanks to that, we managed to have a peaceful dinner without any further issues. Just when I felt relieved that I might be able to get through this, Danny unexpectedly said something. Speaking of which, today's not grandma's punishment day, is it? I can have dinner, right? That's great. As Danny said this with a big smile, Keith and Julia's faces turned pale. Their hands and shoulders trembled slightly, and their eyes darted around. Anyone could tell something was off. But the two forced a smile and tried to gloss over what Danny had said. However, the more they talked, the more Danny revealed the truth right next to Julia. Danny. Just be quiet for a bit. Julia ended up shouting at Danny, making him cry. Seeing this, Nick raised his voice in anger. Don't yell at the child like that. The once joyful dinner turned tense in an instant. In the now silent living room, only Danny's crying could be heard. Nick called Keith over in a voice lower than I had ever heard before. He demanded an explanation for what Danny had said. I talked to mom earlier, and she said she didn't know about the twice-a-month calls I've been making. What's all this about? Um... That is... Well... Uh... Faced with his father's unprecedented stern demeanor, Keith was visibly nervous. Seeing Keith's evasive behavior, Nick pressed even harder for an explanation. Realizing he couldn't escape, Keith confessed everything about how Julia and he had been treating me. Meanwhile, I was comforting Danny, holding him in my arms. I was worried about getting scolded by Julia later, but I couldn't leave Danny crying. I'm sorry, Grandma. Will I get you in trouble again because of me? Danny cried, still concerned about me. It's okay. Don't worry. It's not your fault, Danny. 
I could only soothe him by stroking his head. After a few minutes, having heard everything from Keith, Nick was holding his head in disbelief. It was understandable that he couldn't believe his son and daughter-in-law had been exploiting his mother. Moreover, since Nick himself had suggested the cohabitation, the shock must have been even greater. I trusted you two to take care of mom and even provided startup capital for your business. What were you thinking? After some thought, Nick proposed to Keith and Julia that they end the cohabitation immediately. He also demanded the repayment of all the living expenses he had been sending during their time living together. What? Wait a minute. What living expenses? You haven't been told about this either? Seeing me nod, Nick looked even more disheartened and glared at Keith and Julia. According to my husband, it was agreed upon at the time of suggesting cohabitation that he would transfer $300 monthly for living expenses. And that Keith would discuss this arrangement with me later. But I had never heard anything about these remittances. Instead, I was told, it costs money to live, so you need to work, and was worked like a horse. Hearing more of the truth, Nick called Keith's name in a low voice once again. Then he spoke flatly. All of it. The startup capital and living expenses, pay back everything in full. After hearing this, Keith and Julia turned pale and began to apologize profusely to Nick, even kneeling down. Julia then shared that although the shop had been open for about two years, sales had not been doing well, leading to her mental distress. Jealousy over seeing Danny and me living carefree turned into frustration, which she took out on me. Keith admitted that the desire to keep the monthly remittances for themselves had grown too strong. To prevent Nick from discovering the truth about their treatment of me and the remittances, they decided to cut off Nick's calls. After confessing everything, the two acknowledged their wrongdoing and tearfully promised Nick they would change, but Nick's anger did not subside. Nick took me back home once, and during his temporary return, he collected all the money he had provided to Keith and Julia. Just before leaving the country again, he used part of that money to book me a stay at a business hotel. I'll talk to the company about coming back to US as soon as possible. It's safe here in the hotel with staff around, so please stay here until I return. With that, my husband went back overseas. Though it would have been perfectly fine at our house, I didn't want to cause him any more worry, so I agreed to his proposal. Actually, living in the hotel turned out to be very comfortable. My health and spirits improved remarkably. Nick really did return to US in less than a month. Although the hotel stay amounted to a surprising sum, seeing my improved complexion made him very satisfied. I wondered if anyone else would worry about me as much as he does. I was reassured of how fortunate I am to be married to Nick. After returning home, Keith and Julia started visiting our house frequently. They repeatedly asked Nick for financial assistance again. But trust once lost is not easily regained. Furthermore, the shop had fewer customers than before, and the two, having borrowed money to repay my father, fell behind on their payments. As a result, Keith and Julia's shop closed after just two and a half years. The closure of their dream shop worsened their relationship, leading to their decision to divorce at the same time as the shop closed. Julia left, saying she couldn't find Danny cute anymore taking only her belongings with her. Burdened with debt and the upbringing of Danny, Keith has since straightened out and found a new job, working hard. To support Keith, I occasionally take care of Danny. While I don't provide financial support, I take Danny in on days when Keith works late. Look. This school bag has gold on it and it's really cool. Thanks for buying it, Grandma and Grandpa. Seeing Danny so happy with his new bag is always endearing. My husband and I plan to gently watch over Danny's growth. 
And secretly, I hope Keith will find a kind and caring wife someday.